Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Adobe Noli, coming to you live from the city of Abuja, Nigeria. Can you like, comment, subscribe and click that bell button down below. Hope you're staying safe. Please and please, if you must go, remember to go with your face mask and your hand sanitizers. And if you're seeing this face for the first time, kindly subscribe. If you like what you're watching, then give it a thumbs up. Well, today I'm going to be doing... If you're new to this channel, Mondays are basically where I talk about social issues. Social issues means that I talk about events that happened the previous week. I talk about everything, events. Okay, not everything, not everything. If I say everything, then we will not live here. So it's not just everything. No, I don't talk about everything. I just select important issues that happened the previous week and I get to talk about it. And if you want me to talk about anything that I did not see in the previous week, you can actually leave me a message on any of my social media handles. My social media handle is on the screen or you can send me an email address. My email address is in the description. So you can send me an email or send me a message and I'll talk about it. Okay, but please, please, not everything so that you don't put me in trouble. You know what, you know where we are, you know the situation of things on ground right now. So please just drop me a message or leave me a message that will not put me in trouble. I will not put you in trouble. In as much as any message you send to me, I'll try and talk about it. I'll just try and look for a way to fine tune so that both parties can be safe. You know, we have to be safe for ourselves and for our family. Yes. So today I'm going to be talking about, um, I think this is social, not even I think, this is social issues episode four. So if you've not seen three, two, one, you can check down below. I'm going to leave episode one and two up here so you can actually check them up then three you check it then four this is the fourth one so today i have 11 points i'm going to be discussing but i'm going to be very brief about it unlike previous episodes where i talk about three or four issues but today i have 11 issues 10 11 issues i will be talking about but i'm very brief about it hope i'm not too fast so the first on my list is i want to say a very big thank you i want to really appreciate some people or some group or some society or some community anyone you want to say first and foremost the first set of people i want to be appreciating is the catholic community the catholic church i want to say a very big thank you to the catholic church for actually giving out their hospitals as isolation centers i never knew the catholic church had such a number of hospitals in nigeria i did not know about it so a very big thank you i really appreciate you all for doing this i appreciate your leaders for actually thinking out this because i know there are so many churches out there who have not still done anything for us even though they don't owe us owe us anything, they're not our government. But irrespective of that fact, I want to say a very big thank you to the Catholic Church. Then second, our uh, second appreciation goes to Pastor Tunde Bakari. Um, he donated some of his churches as isolation centers as well. So a very big thank you to you. We really do appreciate, it. and may God bless you as well. Then thirdly goes to um Daystar Church as well. I want to say a very big thank you to this star church. I don't attend the church, but I heard that um, the pastor gives out 5,000 naira to members of its church monthly, which is a very big, it's a very big deal. Like, it's a very big deal for people now because I know so many people have lost their jobs. So many people are not paid. Yes, so I know so many people are really in need of money. 5,000 might seem so small, but it's really a whole lot to so many people. So thank you very much. I may God replenish your pocket. And then the question goes, what is your church doing during this period maybe you should ask your pastor yes they don't want anything but i think they should contribute even if they don't contribute to the government they should contribute to its congregation basically so that is the first issue i have the second issue i'll have is um please those chinese guys that came into nigeria where are they i'm not going to talk too much about this but i heard that the government said they can't they are nowhere to be found i'm wondering what sort of english or what sort of statement is that, that you cannot find these chinese guys like i thought you people made up provisions for their accommodations their logistics and all of that so why are you now saying you don't know where they are it's i it's i don't know it's it's painful and it's sad when i hear things like that i know how much that was spent in bringing in these people all because you said they were going to help the doctors the nigerian doctors on ground help fight this whole pandemic whatever and i know the doctors or in nigeria were doing a very good job before you brought this up. so i don't even know what they've even done in the first place so you saying you can't find them i don't understand so what do you want us to do should we start looking for it for them is there a ransom for us not really a ransom is there a pay for us if we find them I don't understand why are you now telling us you can't find them what do you want us to do now should we start looking for them were they kidnapped can someone please help me ask the government 
what they mean by they cannot find the Chinese guys that came into Nigeria. And from what they are saying again, the Chinese guys, some of them are not even doctors. They're not, they are not even in the medical field. So why did they even come into Nigeria in the first place? I don't understand. Well, that is their business. This is not, this was, this particular, what I'm about to say now is not really, it, it was not on my list. But let me just say, it. I heard um, the government, the presidency has requested for the herbal drugs or herbal drink from Madagascar. My question is, um, why did you really go for Madagascar, Madagascar's drink or Madagascar's herbal drink? Why didn't you try out um, the herbal drinks that so many Nigerians have said they have produced and and have and they have produced and so many of them say they are cures or it can cure this whole pandemic this whole virus thing. why didn't you try it why didn't you try one or two first before going out to patronize someone else who is not even in nigeria you know the problem with most nigerians is that we don't like to patronize ourselves we don't like to patronize our own forget the presidency and all the government even we as individuals we find it difficult to patronize our own rather than patronize our friend we want to patronize somebody else i'm not saying you should patronize a friend whose business is not too good at least give the person a try and then show okay this person's business or this category or the quality of what your friend is giving you is not your taste then it's understandable but not you've not given this person a try and then you just go ahead to try someone else i feel the government should have tried our herbal drinks first in nigeria and if it doesn't work then you cannot go ahead for to patronize the herbal drinks in madagascar this was not even in my list it wasn't even part of the issues i was supposed to talk about but it just came and i decided to just say it basically so moving on to the next point is about the naval officer who tested positive to this um, virus in Delta State and escaped from the isolation center because he was refused marijuana. Marijuana, yes, because he was refused marijuana. I'm trying to understand why he escaped. Wait, you have tested positive to this virus and you still want to smoke marijuana. Like I don't understand the way human beings think. To think again that he's even a law enforcement officer in Nigeria and he now escaped isolation center. See, I think the government needs or the House of Assembly needs to pass a rule because this idea of people escaping from isolation center is unbecoming. I don't understand why are you escaping to do you know your people's life you're putting at stake. You're putting so many people's life at risk. The driver you're going to okay you escaped. I'm sure when you escaped you did not just fly and enter your family house. I'm sure you boarded a, a vehicle or a taxi or a bike or a keke or whatever you basically you might have in, um um spread this virus in that keke or in that vehicle basically they're using transporting yourself to your wherever you were going to then going to meet those people you're going to meet you've also in, um spread this virus again so i think the house of assembly or whoever that is in charge of passing rule house of assembly house of rep whichever they should actually pass a law. Like if you escape from the solution center, there's so so and so penalty for you. Even if it's even if you die yourself, your family is going to suffer for it. Yes, because I don't understand why you've tested positive to this virus and you're still escaping. Why are you escaping to? Why are you escaping? So I think the government also should also try and find out why these people are escaping or running away from this isolation. If the isolation centers are not good enough, then they should actually try and maybe do something make the amenities leave it there's no water provide water for them give them food give them health care or whatever they, they might or whatever might be the cause of or whatever might be the reason for them running away from the isolation center but this particular naval officer that is running away because he was refused um marijuana i don't understand what his problem is because that one is not normal i think his village people are just following him to help in the spread of this virus i think he should be dealt with i think he should be cautioned he should be punished basically for this act that he exhibited. So we now have a new chief of staff in the person of Professor Gambari Agbola Ibrahim. No, that's not how his name is. I've actually turned it upside down. Okay, wait. Pause. We now have a new chief of staff in person of Professor Agbola Ibrahim Gambari. I hope I got it right. So yes, that is his name. He's a 75, he's 75 years old. He replaces um, the late Abakiari, who died of the COVID-19 on April 17th. May he God rest his soul. Yes, this new chief of staff, 75 years old. I'm wondering why it should be him. Yes, he has all the qualities. He has all the training. He has all the um, qualifications and all that. But my question is, 75 years, like, I feel you should have gotten someone else, but what do I know? Nothing. 
you know best you know who should be your chief of staff but basically i feel a younger person would have best would have been the best for this job maybe you should have appointed him as advisor to something or something something not chief of staff that is what i feel so we all heard of um senator utazi utazi of enugu not i think so who came on air saying um that most africans marry just for children and not for love and people came for him you know nigerians we don't i don't know we don't like hearing stories like this we don't like hearing oh our leader said something like this that's so my question is is it not true like let's let's tell ourselves the truth africa basically we marry because of children and not because of love see let's leave children as if they say oh we shouldn't have children again i bet you so many people will not be married today so many people so many africans so many nigerians okay let me talk about nigerians so many nigerians will not be married today we marry because of children because well, look at it when you're about to get married or when you're not yet married the next, first thing your, your, your parents will be saying, oh, I want to carry my grandchildren. They're not saying, oh, I want you to go and love somebody. They're saying, I want to carry my grandchildren. So most times you find out that Africans or Nigerians actually marry because they want to maintain their lineage. They want someone to inherit their property. They want because of social status and all of that. So I don't know why people came for him for saying the truth. Because to me, he said the truth. Africans marry because of children and not because of love. Yes, majority. Even the majority itself. 98%. There's no statistics to back it, though. But I feel 98% of people marry because of children, not because of love. If you even check itself, most times when people don't have children, you find out that they are worried, they try to do so many things, they go for IVM, IVR, that's what they call it. They go for adoption, they feel adoption, adopting opens up way for them to get children. They do so many things. So I don't know why he was actually attacked for saying the truth, because basically to me, he said the truth. So do you remember the man that was arrested by DSS for using the SIM card of um, President Buhari's daughter? Yes, so this man, I think that was in July 2019. So this man has sued for illegal detention. My question is, why sue a man for using SIM card? Not like he stole the SIM card. A service provider, I think the service provider is even empty. A service provider issued him that SIM card and he's using it. Oh, because Boris daughter wants to use the SIM card. So you go ahead to arrest him, to detain him unlawfully and all that. And the funny thing is that they had to wait for Boris daughter to come into Nigeria because I think she was still studying back then. I think, yeah, she was still studying then. So they had to wait for her to come into Nigeria and then clarify, oh, that she's no longer using the SIM and all of that. And that was when they now released him. Like, is this not, I don't understand how we reason. He did not steal the SIM card. Service provider issued this SIM card to him. Okay, if you even have an issue with him using the SIM card, why didn't you go ahead and arrest the service provider or the representative of the service provider or the CEO of the service provider for issuing out a SIM that was once used by the president's daughter? I don't understand why we actually behave like this in this country. Like things that are not supposed to hold water, that is what we actually hold. Like we actually hold on to it like it's our life depends on it. I don't understand. So this man has actually sued the DSS for illegal detention to the sum of i think he sued for 200 million but the courts passed that dss should pay him 10 million 10 million for what basically for making him stay in detention for something he has no like he he did not even know about it he just went innocently bought the same and then he just put himself in trouble like 10 million naira, 10 million caught it to me 10 million does not cut it but have bread it says better than not that is if they will even pay him the money because you know where we belong if you know the kind of country we belong he might not really be paid in the long run so let's see how it goes i pray or i wish that he tells us if he was paid or not but i doubt if he will be paid but if he's paid congrats to him then the immigration ladies that did the bop challenge bop daddy bop daddy See, if you did not participate in that challenge, waiting you gain. I didn't participate too, but I participated in the other one, Sha. So, um, as we all know, the ladies are participated, the immigration ladies, the work with immigration, immigration ladies are participated for that Bob challenge. We all know that um, last month they gave them query for actually using their uniform to participate in the Bob Daddy's challenge. And the, the case was just going on and off, like they should come and explain themselves and all of that. So sometime last week, um, it came to the knowledge of everybody that they had been redeployed to Borno, Kanu, I think, a quite bomb across river. I don't know, so, I'm not so sure again. But Shasha, they were all redeployed to various states and they had seven days to report to their new places of assignment. 
you can imagine seven days and with this lockdown with this lockdown no interstate movement nothing, nothing. so how do you expect them to actually go to their new state of the redeployment i was just wondering how whether they will now start flying because there is no you can't go by air you can't go by road i don't know whether they were expecting i just i don't understand what was in their head when they were giving that ruling on that redeployment i did not understand sure. but um i think on saturday i saw that oh that the redeployment had been stepped down they were still going to investigate and they were still going disciplinary committee and all of that and all that well so i don't know why they're taking this thing so personal like why are you taking it so personal like is it because they use your uniform to do it well i don't know i don't work there but if i don't know if, is it is it was it really or is it really written on their employment terms of employment or terms of engagement i don't know but i don't think it should be a serious problem i don't know why they're taking it with their chest they're putting it in their chest and carrying it like a log of wood please free these ladies i beg of you eh please just free them they will not do it again yeah thank you very much in advance please eh if you're the what they call their head self well whatever the head of immigration please then eh? i beg you please free them they have learned their lessons they will not do it again as well god bless you in advance thank you so moving on to the next point we heard of a case of in uni in just of a student i think a 300 level student of uni just who was shot dead by um some soldiers well i think the power intoxication of our military men is actually getting out of hand like they don't know how to i should say they don't know how to use their weapons or they are abusing it or whatever i don't know well this particular unit just today his name is Rinji, um was arrested with some i think four other guys for alleged bug um, for alleged i think they boggled i don't even understand well maybe for theft or burglary i don't even understand what that's because there are so many stories concerning this whole case but they were arrested fine and then after the investigation they realized that oh they were innocent of this crime and they were set to they were set free these five guys were going and they were telling them okay you know i don't know nigeria is a, nigeria, we have a serious problem in this country so they were actually going they told them to run like they should run and they started running and then one military guy i don't know what his problem was now shot i don't i don't even understand why he was shot in the first place now shot and then the, um, fortunately the bullet hit ringy and he died on the spot so when he was now the whole case was being investigated and all of that. You know, Nigerians were so good at investigating. It was now the military guy said that he thought that the guys that were running were escaping from from the from cell. So that was why he now shot. My question is, must you shoot to kill? Like if you must shoot, can't you just shoot maybe the leg or something? Must you shoot to kill? Even if he was escaping or they were escaping, must you shoot to kill? I don't understand why why some military guys are actually denting the image of the military of the nigerian military i don't understand why some of them do that i think they all need training i think they need to be trained properly from begin from the head to the tail like from the head i think proper training needs to be done on them because every week week in week out we always have a case of oh military this one military that one is either military is killing or military is brutalizing or military is i think it's really getting out of hand i think the military the chiefs of the military should come to that's if they're even in the know of what's happening if they're in the know i beg of them that please they should come together and try and see how they can help manage this whole situation it's no longer funny people are losing their children people are losing their brothers their sisters it's no longer funny look at this rangy guy now he had a promising future and then you just cut it short like that 300 level uni just he had a promising future and it was just cut short for no just reason at all i think there are better ways you guys can do this thing i think there are better ways then the story of a lady that killed her house help for 2000 her house help of i think she was 16 years there about for, for allegedly stealing 2000 naira my question is why are ladies or why are women this way you never get to hear oh or beats and um, houseboy or oga beats 
house help or house girl it's always women it's always women that are beating up house girls it's always women that are doing all of this maltreatment is the women um killing of house help is the women you don't give your house help food it is the women that do this i don't understand why we women do something like this like i don't understand we are the same set of people that would actually carry children for nine months so why will you now maltreat someone's child someone someone's child why will you match if you're not so good if you don't want this particular house help then you let her go why treat her like she's a slave we are here complaining oh we're slave master we're slaves to to um the colonial whatever whatever we are here complaining about that and then meanwhile in our homes we are still maltreating people we are still treating people like slaves why are we doing all of this and then tomorrow again you don't have to be saying oh the government is this the government is this meanwhile in your own home you cannot control your home you cannot rule your home you cannot govern your home like how will you kill a 16 year old girl for allegedly stealing two thousand? even if she stole that money is that enough reason why you should beat her and kill her Okay, the story, according to how I read it, is that the 16-year-old girl, the madam accused her of stealing 2000 And the 16-year-old girl was saying, I did not steal your money. I did not take your money. And she just kept beating the girl and called four other people who came and joined in beating the girl until she fell down and died. And the worst thing is that after she died, they buried her without her parents' knowledge. They just went ahead to bury her. First and foremost... Why would you beat her for 2,000 naira? And she kept saying she did not take this money, she did not take this money. You know the funny thing about this thing is that most times, eh, it's even that madame's children that takes that money. And at the end of the day, they now turn the whole case and now say it's the house help that takes the money. Meanwhile, it is the madame's children that took that money. So why won't you just, even, it's even if it is even 100,000 naira, must you beat to kill? You punish her or you send her back home to her parents. Yes, you tell the parents, oh, I cannot stay with your daughter again because your daughter is a thief or whatever. But not beat her to that point. I've heard of so many madams who will not give their children or their house helps food. Like their house helps cannot even open the pot until madam comes back. Even if it means that madam comes back by 12 a.m., that house help will not eat food. Some house helps are even babies. Like that is the baby, madam's baby. Madam's baby can be three years old. Meanwhile, house help is five years old. And you now see that five-year-old taking care of the three-year-old. Like, what do you expect that five-year-old to do? Like, baby a baby. How is that possible? How is that going to work? You go to church. It's even worse of a religious. I think it's even more with churches. You go to church and you can clearly differentiate house help from madame's children. The way the house help is dressed, so tattered. So you cannot imagine if you can dress your house help like that to church. You cannot imagine what that house help is going through in the house. Like you cannot even hide your face in shame and say, okay, let me just dress this child well before going out so that people don't think negative about me. You still dress this child anyhow and then go out. Then can you imagine what the child is going to do? I think the house of assembly or whoever is in charge of passing law should actually pass a bill concerning house help, domestic staff and all that because we've had so many cases of all this maltreatment, bullying and all of that by these so-called house helps. We've had enough of this. Like you can do better than this. If you must if you must punish a household for doing something wrong, then go about it the right way. Not beating to kill. Not beating to kill an innocent child. That is somebody's child as well. How would you feel if someone treated your child that way? Please and please, parents, there is no need having eight children, ten children, forty children where you cannot take care of them. What's the sense of having such number of children and you cannot train them? You now send them to someone's house at the end of the day that your child gets killed. Like, what is the essence? I think we should all try and control ourselves, try and control everything around us. Because the economy is not as rosy as it was back in our father's days or our forefathers' days where they could have 10 children and all of that. Now, school fees alone self will make you shiver. School fees, when I hear children's school fees now, I'm like, this is your school fees paid my, my school fees for nursery school to university until I even finished. So most times, I think we parents should actually... Not, when I say we parents, I'm not yet the parents, but generally parents, future parents, parents currently, um, we should try and actually cater or give birth to children we can cater for. I feel that is what, that's, I think that will be the solution to all this whole child abuse. 
So moving on to the next case is something similar about this whole death thing. It's about a lady who drowned her daughter for in her defense. She drowned the daughter because the daughter prevented her from securing admission to OAU to study law. Like how is that how is that supposed to be an excuse for drowning your own child? According to her, um she got pregnant for a guy why she attended her jam classes the guy denied the pregnancy and when she wanted to abort the hope the pregnancy her father told her not to abort the pregnancy she should keep it and all of that and then she gave birth to the child after giving birth to the child she stays with her sister who has nothing doing after the child has been put to bed she now drowned the baby in a bucket of water like she filled up a bucket of water she filled up a bucket with water and now drowned the baby put the baby's head into the water until the baby drowned and died and after the most painful thing that when she after she did this she went so she actually reported herself to the police yes yeah, she took herself to the police and reported police that she, yeah, she killed her child saying that the child prevented her from getting admission into oau and there was no money she was frustrated and all of that well, she was arrested. Well, I think in her own case, she was actually going through some postpartum depression. You know, most times, most women do not want to agree to the fact that they actually go through this depression. But the, the fact, the truth is that most women go through it. And I think the doctors should try and make it... Um, or try and make it like a compulsory class now for pregnant women to go through so that when this whole depression thing comes up after delivery they find a way to handle it i think if you have someone who just puts to bed i think it's best that you try and monitor the person for a few months because most times some of them go through this postpartum depression and you might not know sometimes they themselves don't know that they are going through depression and they just end up being something crazy and all that. So please try and actually look out for people that just put to birth. Yes, and talk to them. Try and make them cheerful. Whenever you notice that they are down, try and make them lively and all of that. Just go and read about it and you know how to deal with it. I'm not a doctor. I'm not into the medical fields. Just, do, just go and read for the sake of your loved ones who have just put to birth. Yeah. So the final issue we're talking about is about IG of police who withdrew the police escorts of e-money. If you don't know e-money, what are you waiting for? As the name implies, e-money. Yes, he's a businessman, he's a philanthropist, he's a sure he's everything. He's everything. Just gonna look for him, you shall know him. Well, his escorts were withdrawn by the IG um Adamu something something sha because of his flamboyant lifestyle and because he uses his um, escort or patrol whatever or his officers as domestic staff and my question is wait first ig are you just noticing that um your officers are being used as domestic staff or is there something between you and e money that you're not telling us because as we all know we all know these things now you see a police officer that is fully kitted see if he's wearing maybe mufti and then he's running up and down like his sleeve is understandable but you see a police officer who is fully kitted from head he's wearing his berets he's wearing his uniform with his ranks and all of that you see him running like what i don't understand to go and open car for a guy or madame to come down you see a police that is fully kitted carrying handbag madame's handbag and you still see a police officer loosening or untying the shoes of Oga. We saw that now. She can remember when we saw that. So I don't understand. Are you trying to now to wake up from your slumber and now do something about these whole officers being used as slaves, as house help? Somewhere? I don't understand. Like, can you please help us relate? Or you want to do it now? Or you want to start with e-money? I'm trying to understand. Well, it would be a very good thing if this whole using officers as house helps or slaves or whatever is being curtailed because I see it and I'm like, this shouldn't be. As a police officer, your, your duty is to protect lives and property, not to be a house help, not to be running errands for God, not to be running errands for madam. Or, see, there's so many things. See, if I see the pictures of some of these things that these police officers have done, either on tying or tying madam's shoe or gas shoe, holding umbrella for you both people i'll put it here so that people see so it's just so annoying when you see some of these things like i just hope the ig of police is waking up from his slumber now and trying to ensure that his boys are properly taken care of because this is not this is not what they signed up for they not signed up to come and be boy boy for anybody because the person has money to pay or the person have money to flogs police officers are supposed to be taking care of lives and properties so if the ig is waking up from his slumber now kudos to him thank god at least he has finally woken up that is the most important thing so 
I don't know which what did I miss this week? I there were so many things to talk about, so many things to talk about, but I know talk about entertainment, right? Entertainment, maybe I'll talk about it next week. And yeah, football is back. Football, the Germany League is back. Did you watch the ball? I didn't watch it though. I did not watch it, but I was just hearing left, right, center. Oh, the ball is back and all of that. And I don't really have much to say about it, but I'm just hoping that what the decision they took to start up this whole Germany ball. Bondlesha, Bondlesha League is actually the right decision. Yes, I heard that some of the players or all the players came in few buses. You know, like before that, they come in one bus, they came in few buses and in more buses, social distancing and all that. And then the coaches and other players were were asked to social distance themselves, sha. And the players definitely, if you're playing, but there's nothing like social distancing in playing Bolabi. Yes, so um, there were no. Um, what do you call them again? No, no, what's no, what's no audience? What do you call them again? There were no spectators, yes, they were not there to cheer their their players, so the stadium was actually empty. And I think they tried as much as possible to ensure that they did not or the fans did not come close to the stadium as to use as to cause any form of um gathering or crowd. So I think they actually put that in place as well. So there was no form of crowd in and out of the stadium which is also a good thing but i'm going to leave the results of saturday's match and sunday's match here so that you can see so this is where we draw my cutting on social issues episode four if you did like it give me the thumbs up if there are topics you want me to talk about that i didn't talk about drop it in the comment section i'll talk about it in my fifth episode of social issues so what again did I miss? What again did I? I don't think I missed any other thing. So thank you once again for watching my video. Please do remember to stay safe and be good as usual. Be good, stay safe. Love you all and bye.